Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a Great Basin style butchering knife. Now, this is a simple type of knife that was used in the Great Basin for thousands of years uh, for butchering big game animals. I'm going to use today a piece of fine grain basalt. The stuff comes from northern Arizona. My friend Ron gave me this. And uh, I've heard it referred to as basidian because it is such a good quality. It actually works similar to obsidian. It's a really sharp, very brittle material but it's also very homogeneous. Hear that ring? Very pure, very good quality stuff. So we're gonna jump into it. This I'm just gonna use the hammer stone. Carefully working into this. Boy, this is some nice stone. I'm also just gonna be using all primitive tools today, hammer stones and antler. I'm gonna avoid any modern tools kind of feeling all abo all primitive today like bob ross i'm like the bob ross of flint napping look at these happy little flakes just coming off of here now they want some friends how about we make some more let's give them lots of friends to play with down there in the debitage pile well these flakes you don't really have to hit it hard and they're really carrying traveling into this stone, I actually need to be a little careful. I don't want them to keep traveling that far because they're they continually thin the edge out. I need to back my angle off a little bit. I want shorter, steeper flakes. So I end up with a thicker edge that I can then knock flakes off of. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. See, I'm hitting on this end. Now, this would be the tip of the knife. You can see it's, it's got this thick, weird area in here. So I'm going to back this thing up against my inside of my thigh. I just don't want any wave action. So whenever I'm hitting on the ends like this, I want that, I want to deaden the amount of vibration that this thing is feeling. Gosh, this stuff is really like obsidian. I mean, it is, it's got a sheen to it. Really nice material. This is, it's, it's brittle though, and it's not, it's not strong. Some basalt is really strong and tough. This stuff is not. You gotta be careful with it. Doing these little short brushing flakes just on that, just to knock off some very short, steep flakes to give me a steep but stout edge now got this platform here I'm gonna put this end of this thing into my thigh I'm gonna hit it with my moose antler on this side and try to drive a flake down here and I've got my hand underneath it to support that flake beautiful man all of these points in here these flakes I mean can be made into all kinds of hunting points, arrow points, small dart points, elko points, stuff that was used out west. And I'm gonna put that tip on the inside of my thigh. And I'm not gonna hit this one with the antler, I'm gonna use the hammer stone because I want a very quick, sharp strike. I don't want a lot of wave action. A softer hammer, softer billet tends to give more of a pronounced wave action through the stone which can run to you can run into the problem of breaking it in half so i just want a very short quick burst of energy with the uh, hammer stone ah it broke but i see why because of this little flaw right here Boy, sometimes that's all it takes is just a little flaw like that. That should not have broken, but it had a little pitting in there. And that was what propagated the break. Yeah, and you can see where that flaw was right there. It was a little indication on the outside of that stone. And that's all it took to break that. Now, had I knock some flakes off and flake this off flake that flaw off of there and kept hitting from the sides before i did the basal work definitely would not have broken i would have eliminated that flaw but 
It happens. Luckily, that's not the only piece I got. I got another piece here. So I'm gonna keep working on this, work it down and make a knife out of this one. I'm gonna strike on this edge here, this slope, edge slopes down. That was not too hard of a blow and that edge was not ground enough. This stuff will fool you. It, it, it seems like it would be tough material, but you have to back back off on your horsepower a little bit with this. There we go. That was better. Didn't hit it as hard. But see, here's one of these, another one of those little cracks. You can see the that tan brownish indication there that there are some there are some cracks in this stone, some little hidden cracks on the outside. So I'm gonna have to be careful. Once I get that outer thing skinned off, then we'll be in a lot better shape. Now what I'm gonna try to do, because this surface is a little bit more rounded, I'm gonna try to drive a flake, hit that and drive a flake to follow this ridge and take this thicker portion that will be the tip of the knife, thin it down, I think it may work. And I'm going to put this against my thigh. I don't want any excess vibration. Yeah. Step fractured. Wasn't quite rounded enough. That's one thing I was a little concerned about, but that's okay. A little bit of edge trimming. Not getting too crazy with the flakes. I just want short, steep flakes working into that edge. All right, I'm going to try to take this off. I'm going to put my finger on the tip of this thing. not hitting very hard I don't mm, that thing is rounded I don't really like it. it might take too much force to take a flake off but this back edge here is angled correctly so I'm being very gentle in my flake removals right now I'm just taking just hitting it just hard enough to get that flake to detach yeah. see there's another flaw in there you can see it in that flake as well There's these little cracks that begin at the surface and they they get down into the stone a little bit and they can those can those can break these points these pieces if you're not careful so the best thing I'm finding to do with this is skin this surface off as much as possible before I get crazy with doing any radical flake removal so really grinding that heavily All right, take my moose antler and I'm gonna smack it right there see how far I get this flake to travel and I'm gonna keep my fingers underneath it to support that flake There it was. Big beautiful percussion flake, flat, sharp. Just wants to be made into an arrow point. Now, got this weird, looks like a fold in this. When this was lava and it flowed out of the volcano, it looks like it folded there a little bit. I don't like that there. It looks like there could be some hidden crack in there. So I want to get that off of there. Again, I'm not going for any big heavy flake removals at this point. I just want just 
Just want that off of there. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Now this edge, this this face here is really steep. And it, it almost dips. It, it kind of curves in like this. I don't know. Boy, that's, that's going to pose a little bit of a problem. I might actually have to just leave it on there. Better to do that than to struggle and try to fight this thing. A lot of times you have to work with the stone. You have to work with what it gives you. And if it has issues, sometimes it's better to just leave it alone than to risk breaking it and wasting all that time and material. The stuff was like gold to the old people. And they didn't... They didn't want to waste it. A lot of this stuff was had to be traded or carried long distances. So they just lived with a problem. It really actually wasn't a problem. It's just they would live with a cosmetic defect. Living out there in those western deserts, boy, they it could be a struggle at times. And any survivalist knows if you don't have a knife, you break your knife, you're in trouble out there. All right, so I just worked that thick edge off of there. Another beautiful flake. really scrunching that grinding that hammer stone in there when I rub that I want that to crush that edge and sharpen it and I'm gonna try to strike right there it's gonna have to be an accurate strike yeah, didn't really work that well it's Saving all of these flakes too because they're just beautiful arrow point quality flakes. This stuff works so nice. Look at that beautiful man, that stuff is nice. Now this platform, because I took two flakes, one off here, one off here, I've thinned it down behind this platform. I d this platform is now no good because if I strike it, it's just going to break in here. There's no mass behind that, so I'm going to have to remove it with You gotta be careful with that edge, man. If I jam my knuckle into that edge, I'm gonna really be careful with it. I'm trying to keep my follow through on my pressure flaker. When I talk, take those pressure flakes off, I don't wanna jam my knuckle into that edge because the time I pop that flake off, that edge is sharp. Ooh, almost did it right there, damn. Be careful. Yeah, I almost did it again. I I feel my knuckle just barely tap it. Whew. That I'm not really worried about. What I'm trying to do is get some flakes to thin out this tip portion. This surface is so flat. Those flakes, they will not travel over that. I've got to work into this a little bit and make it a little more rounded. If I can get it a little more rounded on this side, you can see, it's, I mean, it is just 
flat like glass there. Yeah, this, this no flake is going to travel unless it it likes that rounded surface. What happens when it hits these flat surfaces like this is it'll go along and then it'll keep trying to go down and what it'll end up doing is the flake will travel for a little bit and then it'll dig in and step and break off. So <clears throat> that's why those surfaces need to be rounded and your edge, at least, especially where your edge is and where you're taking that flake off. It needs to have a curved profile to it when viewed from the side. So, I can see where this one flake stepped and it looked like the energy kept going right in here, but it didn't didn't remove that flake. But I can hear it. It's it's been detached from the surface here. Hmm. Yeah, I can see what happened there. This stuff kind of flakes weird. I've not, not done any big percussion work with this material, but I can hear, you can hear the difference in the sound. I can hear there's, there's a crack. Now here's the flake I removed that created that step fracture. I don't know if you... I can fit it back in there if you guys have watched my other videos, but you can use these as a punch. And sometimes you can get them to knock the rest of that flake off. I'm actually gonna give it a shot. So tap it in there like that. And you see I've already removed a bunch of flakes off of there so that's hanging out in outer space. But I'm gonna see if I tap this, if maybe I can possibly punch off that, the rest of that flake i don't know if it's gonna happen but let's give it a shot we're we're going all out here guys all right i'll be darned it did it yeah it actually worked it did take eh, it took some of that edge off i didn't really want it to but Look what it took off. We got rid of that big, thick, nasty ridge. And now we've got a nice, flat, thin piece that we can then work into this knife. So it actually kind of saved me. I did lose some size on that, but it's okay. All right. Now, the whole world has opened up to us on this one. We're gonna grind that. I want these flakes on this one to carry and travel so I'm gonna take so with the towards the base here try to drive it try to drive a there we go real big pretty percussion flake next one will come off right here really grinding that heavy stuff is brittle so I'm going to try to get in around that, and this has got a bad edge on it, but if I can hit it just right. It kind of worked. You set your edges up right, this stuff really seems to like antler. But you can't get them too thick. Some, some, definitely some different stuff. I've never worked this material before. I've had it for a while. Had some buckets of it, but never really messed with it until today. Tried to get away with something I knew I shouldn't have. I could hear it when I hit it. I heard the vibration. It went bing. That's, that's the warning sound. You hit it and it starts ringing like a bell. You can sometimes feel the vibration too. It's like, ooh, don't hit it again. Just set your edges up right. Taking the time. I invested too much time into this. I don't want to break it in half now. That looks better. Okay. But 
There we go. Much better. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, see, it's much cleaner. Coming off really clean now. Look at these nice broad percussion flake scars. Oh yeah, beauty. I was actually able to get some of that thickness removed off that tip using this smaller billet. So I'm going to try it, see if I can. Yeah, it's working now. There we go. We can get one, at least one or two more flakes off that edge. It should be. There we go. There we go. That saved it. <laughs> Well, not the prettiest blade I've ever made, but I kind of like that rough, desert-looking appearance. I'm going to do a little pressure flaking on this just to clean it up, and then we'll call it done. I've used these stone knives like this for butchering, and they are amazingly effective. I think they're actually better than a steel knife because they don't slice into the hide, and if you're a primitive guy, you need, you need to make clothing out of that deer hide or that buffalo hide you don't want any slices in it and these stone knives just are superb for that they're better than a metal knife because they do not slice the hide they're not scalpel sharp which you don't really want all you need is something just to separate that connective tissue between the carcass and the skin and you get a very clean skin that makes a really prime clothing and buckskin honestly i prefer a stone knife for skinning it's far superior to a steel knife it's faster too because you don't have to be as careful you can just slash away with it and not worry about slicing into the skin Well, I'll tell you, that piece of basalt put up a bit of a fight and was giving me some problems, especially towards the tip, but I was actually able to, to overcome it and create this cool leaf-shaped Great Basin butchering knife. And I've seen examples of these from Oregon and the Southwest. Of course, up in the, a little bit further north up in the Great Basin, they used obsidian a lot but they also did use basalt. But I like that, man. It's just a simple, but kind of rough looking stone knife, but man, that'll do the job. I can feel the edges on that thing. And that would give you a lot of resharpenings. This could last you a long time if you were out there in the Great Basin. This is something that those guys would have prized and would have held on to and used and resharpened over and over and over again until they were basically just exhausted. Then they would either make them into a spear point or something or just discard them but cool looking basalt great basin butchering knife i had i had images in my head of a little bit thinner flatter beautiful flake scars on it but like i said i was in a bit of a hurry to get this done the sun's about to set and i wanted to get this thing done today and get this video finished so there you go cool little great basin butchering knife real similar to what you find out there Got a little bit of roughness to it, but man, that looks, I like that old look. 
I don't want it to look all pretty like it was stamped out of a machine. I like it to have a little bit of a rough, rugged appearance to it. It has that primitive look to it, and I really like that. You can still see the humanity in the material that you make. It doesn't look like it's machine made. It looks like it was made by a person. It doesn't have to be perfect. This simple but effective knife would have been the centerpiece of any Great Basin hunter-gatherer's toolkit. It's perfect for a multitude of different tasks. And in addition to the knife, I now have a load of flakes I can chip into hunting points. Points made from these basalt flakes will have razor-sharp edges and are capable of taking down the toughest big game in North America.